How's it? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a weird one for me. Another episode of the Sunday Discussions, and it's <laughs> at this present time, it is not Sunday, it's Wednesday, but because of the public holiday tomorrow, it's Heritage Day, so if you're a South African, it's a very proud, proud day for us. Um, it's a magnificent day. Uh, we get to celebrate cultures and uh, heritage. It's where we come from. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of people reminisce on the past, but a lot of people use it and take the opportunity to dance and embrace one another's cultures. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a celebration than anything else. Um. So guys, yeah, today's Sunday's discussion is uh, it's a special one for me. Um, I'm going to be opening up about certain scenarios that have happened in the past couple of weeks, past couple of months, <clears throat> as well as using this platform to voice my opinion about certain scenarios that have occurred to me um, through trying to promote my business online. And, uh, yeah, just some of the blatant um, negativity that's going on through through social media platforms. Um, not only that, I will also be discussing and voicing my opinion on certain scenarios within the hunting industry and how we can combat uh, poaching incidents that have, if you've been following my social media feed, you've been seeing that I... I posted an incident on Wednesday regarding dogs and uh, sports uh, of poaching. But we'll get into that. Um, before we do, some special people need to be mentioned. Uh, first first of all, big shout out to Trees and Camo. Um, super stoked to be a part of this team still. Looks like we're going to be kicking it off again in 2021. So uh, yeah, big shout out to Trees and Camo. Then uh, secondly, Tacticam. Uh, this is a new product that's hit, hitting our shores soon. We will be listing it on the PH Toolbox. Um, it is listed as we currently speak. Uh, we've got the pre-order option. Uh, our shipment hasn't arrived yet. And um, yeah, pretty excited to get Tacticam over here and introduce it to a couple of guys in the industry. And uh, hopefully it can benefit and um, really help the guys filming their own hands going forward. Next up, splitting image tag is you do me. I'm hoping to get around to them this weekend because um, we're playing golf down in the Port Elizabeth area. Man, I just want to see some mounts. <laughs> even the, even if they don't even have to be mine. Hello, my girl. This is Pepper, by the way. One of the benefits of doing my podcast at home. Um, yeah, so big shout out to Splitting Image Taxidermy. Um, they fantastic guys. Look, if you um, if you're in the area, if you've been hunting in South Africa and you really want your trophies taken care of, Splitting Image Taxidermy is they're the guys you need to get hold of. Um, the service is outstanding, and um, it's yeah, they're just next level. <clears throat> I've only had good experiences and I've only had good feedback coming from my clients that I've already used with them. So a big shout out to Splitting Image. Next up, Maxxis tires, like I've been saying. I've been using the Maxxis Razor Mud Terrains a mining application for some time now. Uh, they're really doing well. Unfortunately, my pickup is at uh, in the uh, workshop, busy rep repairing my clutch. Um, so I haven't really been driving them around, I'm going to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, fantastic tyre, like I said, just the mileage, uh, the noise reduction on the road. You know, normally when you put these mud terrains on, the noise just absolutely kills you. Uh, these these guys have really re reduced the noise levels drastically, so it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so a big shout out to, to um, Max's Tyres. Then, um, guys, yeah, if you haven't yet, support a PH, please, man. Um, 
it's been a tough season. It really has. And I've had some tremendous support over my social media platforms. And I really, I, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for you guys. So uh, just thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. If you guys would like to pop around to Redbubble, I'll tag the link below if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, otherwise, you can find my merch um, on PH Toolbox, which leads me to the next big one, and that's PH Toolbox. Just thank you to everyone at the team. Uh, we've put together some fantastic programs and things going forward. I'm really looking forward for the future for PH Toolbox. Um, and yeah, I just can't wait to see what the future holds. And um, we've got some amazing products. Thank you so much for all the suppliers that have had a bit of faith in us. Um, it's been scary. It really has. But uh, we've finally seen things come together. And um, it's just it's just a matter of hard, putting in the hard yards now and getting people aware of what, what PH Toolbox is. <clears throat> okay, guys. Well, um, without wasting any more time, uh, we've got a jam-packed episode for tonight. Um and uh, yeah, can't wait to share it with you guys. So enjoy. Wow, Sunday discussion. <laughs> Guys, I haven't, I haven't, um, I'm going to tell you guys straight out, I haven't prepared anything. And the reason for that is I've had a couple of questions, <clears throat> like I mentioned, I uh, posted a poaching incident on Wednesday. So if you haven't, I'm not going to put it on the YouTube video, but if you haven't, head along to any of my social media platforms. I'll even, I'll put it into, um, I'll upload it on my personal youtube platform if youtube take it down well then so be it but you can get it on you on instagram and facebook um yeah so i haven't prepared anything i'm just going to be answering a couple of questions i got in the last two weeks and um obviously addressing a certain issue that i've got uh, surrounding advertising on social media but uh, we'll get into that. I'm pretty excited about this. Let me start off by addressing the Facebook incident. Facebook and Instagram. My two wonderful platforms that have given me the support. Um, pretty much got me to where I am today. And they hit me with a surprise that I was not expecting. Do I understand it? Yeah, I do. Um, but it's it's very frustrating, and I feel uh, I feel as a hunter, we put into a category that isn't fair. Anyway, let me tell you the story. So, um, like I mentioned a couple of months ago, or last month actually, to be precise, I started my very own e-commerce business, and everything's been going well. But like you and I both know, some of the best marketing you can do is on social media. So I put a couple of items together, none of which, let me highlight this, none of which provoke any sort of violence, have got actually anything to do with killing anything. Um, so I put these items together and I put them out and I create this ad and next minute Facebook and Instagram, both of them, kick it out. They insisted that I provoked, my ad provoked violence, um, and they prohibit the sale of weapons and uh, anything to do with that sort of stuff. So here's yeah, my question. I understand that. And unfortunately, when you're selling online, you don't have as much of a say as who you are selling to. You, just out of goodwill, trust that the person that's buying your knife, gun, or whatever it may be, 
is a decent bloke. So I get that. I get that you don't want me to post anything that's got anything affiliated to a weapon or anything. My concern is, is that when I'm trying to sell a niche item, such as the rings, the wedding rings, or a leather bag, you're prohibiting that advert from going out because my store lists knives and that. I'm not promoting the knife. I'm not promoting the scope. I'm not promoting anything to do with killing anything. I'm purely just promoting a couple of accessories and traveling bags. It concerns me that this is a world that society is brought up and that myself as a I think I get to call myself a young entrepreneur. We we get put into this category because now all of a sudden we provoke violence. We assume to be provoking violence. And um, yeah. So I understand. Look, I'm frustrated. I really am. I really think it, it should be fair that I could be able to at least promote some sort of um, items to drive traffic to my website. I really should. Um, I understand that knives and stuff listed on my website is can be used as a dangerous weapon. I do understand that. So my frustration is, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm just arguing for the case of arguing right now, but I'm just I'm gutted. Eh? I I don't think I'll get to advertise on social media, which is a little bit frustrating. That's why if you guys are listening to this, if you hear anything from PH Toolbox, please just like and share, <laughs> get the word out there somewhere or other. But uh, yeah, so Facebook hit me with that, and on that topic. I just, I really want to take this moment to say thank you. Um, I appreciate all the work that all these platforms are doing that are non, that are, that are for the hunters. Um, it's an amazing thing to see, um, especially, and a special mention goes out to Wildnet TV. They're creating these platforms for for us hunters to freely express ourselves on, and and it's it's magnificent to see. And uh, I'm so glad that instead of being knocked a couple of steps back from the more popular social media platforms, we've been able to to adapt and reincorporate our own. So um, big shout out to all the guys that have created these like Hunting Link and all these sort of things. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, Wildnet TV, because now us hunters have got our own platform to to uh, to discuss topics to without being scrutinized or without being judged or taken to task by any of the greenies out there. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what happened. Um, okay, guys, my main, probably my main point for the evening that I wanted to discuss was poaching. Now, if you haven't seen the video, this isn't going to make sense. So I would highly recommend you to go and see the video, maybe pause this podcast or and just go and watch the video quickly. It's a minute 30 seconds and then you would understand what I'm talking about but um if not you you'll probably pick up the gist of the story so um a couple of well on Wednesday I uh, released this video of dogs greyhounds what would look like majority of them being greyhounds scattering through the bush after spring back and to me from first glance it looked like a female springback and i know this time of year she's either heavily pregnant uh, or she's just had a little one 
So, um, yeah, that's that's another biggie. Um, and these guys are riding on the back of a pickup, chasing after, which looked to be more than about 20-odd dogs, chasing after the springback. And there's a syndicate going around in South Africa that the one that catches the dog that catches the animal is the one that gets paid out. Now it's become huge. It's become a huge, huge, huge industry, especially in the Eastern Cape. I mean, um, I'm affiliate. Well, I'm part of a a really a magnificent group that goes around and. Um, prevents these sort of things from happening getting law enforcement involved um, doing everything by the book and it's really it's clamped down on a number of these syndicates actually um, happening and some of them have been on our doorstep some of them have been um, out of town but it's really awesome to see the community come together and um, and really just just fight this battle against poaching because I mean if the farmers aren't getting murdered and the drought is not bad enough we've got to sit with a bunch of gangs I'm going to call them going out there and bidding making this a sport and poaching our wildlife illegally guys this is not to feed families this is not to ethically conserve and preserve species this is to typically make a ton of money people that actually have got their own money and um in effect i think it's just blatant cruelty i really do i think it's blatant blatant cruelty so here's my take on this whole thing and we were we were questioned in one of the forums, how do we go about preventing or stopping this? Yes, my thing. So, and I'll bring Rhino poaching into this again, guys. These are my personal opinions. This is not, there's been no research done about this. There's just what I've seen and learned from the industry over the last couple of years. The risk factor involved in these poaching syndicates leads to the higher stakes. So leads for that price tag to be high. If we're going to continue to make this an extreme way of poaching, the price tag is just going to get higher and higher and higher. Pretty much like the rhino horn situation. You can face tremendous jail time, if not life. And in some incidents, poachers are getting shot at because I think the landowners are just, in Afrikaans, we call it gutful. But that's what's led to these things being, having the price tags that they do. They don't deserve to, but they do because of the risk factor. So in the rhino incident, my personal opinion would be rhino horn grows back. It's hair. It can grow back, I think it's every five years. Please don't correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, so harvest the rhino horn, sell it, flood the market, put the demand down, and Therefore, the poaching syndicates don't have way of income. On the dog handling side of things, get involved in the community. Put up a dog racing track, because I don't know, and I would speak under correction here, I don't know if dog racing is legal or illegal here in South Africa. I did. I am aware of some countries it being illegal, but just like horse racing, I don't think it does too much harm to the dog other than what I've just seen on my video. Running in the scorching heat um, over horrendous terrain. I mean, that dog was is definitely, definitely going to get hurt somewhere, somehow. 
So um, approach these communities, put up a dog racing rink, and have a couple of sponsored days just to get, you know, the the demand for it up and putting the price tag on it um, would definitely stop what's happening out there. Because no no animal has the right to suffer the way that springback did, or those some of those dogs would have. There's no water out there. They all get loaded back onto the back end and drive probably another two and a half hours before they get any sort of nutrients or food or anything like that. So have it controlled. Don't try and eliminate it. Just control it. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we, we're we missing the point on here. You know, in the rhino situation, I think there's definitely a huge influence from leadership that we haven't seen it legalized sooner. I know the sale of rhino horn is legal now in South Africa, whether it's legal worldwide, or I think we're getting closer. But uh, yeah, so that's that's just my opinion and my take on the whole poaching incident. Guys, look, there are poachers out there, and especially now after COVID, there's poachers that are out there that are hungry. There's guys that are out there that need to feed their families, that don't have jobs, that see an opportunity, and their hunting, gathering instincts kick in. They want to feed their family. They want to look after their family, as anyone would. And they go to the extreme. This is not that. This is a sport. This is unethical cruelty. And, um, yeah, I just hope we find a solution to it sooner rather than later because... uh, we will we'll see huge huge damage in the future if we just keep letting this happen. So um, big thumbs up to all the communities and especially my local one uh, that's doing everything in their power to to prevent these things from happening and to putting a stop to it before it even gets serious. So uh, I know the guys here in the Queenstown district have done some incredible work and it's truly inspiring to to be a part of and to see and um yeah and i just wish him well and um, keep up the good work guys it's awesome okay guys and then um yeah nearing the end um yeah I'm just trying to see. Okay. What lit the fire for your PH career and why do you see yourself doing it in the future? Okay. I want to take this apart and say what really got me going to becoming a PH was uh, I loved the conservation work um, behind it. Becoming a hunter is also part of understanding that you're conserving species you're looking after because it's like, I, like I mentioned so many times before, we've created this artificial circle of life, especially here in South Africa, that we need to now look after. And it's our obligation to do that as hunters and uh, yeah, um, so the story goes, it was the 28th of June, woke up early on the Saturday morning, well, the evening of the 28th, my dad came into the room and I was busy playing PlayStation and he said to me, would you like to go and hunt your first buck? Um, to me, as an animal lover, I really loved animals. I 
I enjoyed my time with animals. I, I loved trying to understand why they reacted the certain way. I saw this as an opportunity of understanding another animal. I mean, I've had rabbits, hamsters, mice, dogs, no cats, um, but everything. I've had across the board, I think we even at one stage, we had, we had the most, obs I think we had ducks at one stage. Anyway, um, and for me it was to understand the animal's behavior and to understand why we need to hunt these animals. I've always seen hunters and I've always seen um, people doing their little bit. And for me it was just to understand that I was I was intrigued by it. Anyway... Woke up on the morning of the 29th, Saturday morning. My dad went in, opened up a couple of his shops, came back out, fetched me, and before I knew it, we were uh, on Hunters at Wall, what would be called, at that stage it was Volskersburg, what would be called Hunters Hill now today. And uh, it was a little farmhouse. There was a little tennis court. A cattle crawl up at the top there, a little cattle section, together with a little shed. And uh, that's how my hunting career started. Uh, I went out there with uh, bright white, high-tech sneakers, <laughs> those old-fashioned things. And, um, yeah, got into the range with the triple two, pulled off two shots. I remember it was just two shots. And we decided we were ready to go out and hunt my first animal. And um, my dad had no experience in hunting. My uncle had a little bit. And there was no there was no real hunting environment. It was just this cattle farm that had a couple of blessed back on. And anyway, we stalked across and got into position and I put the rifle down on the tree and of course we didn't know any better the tree started moving I was back fever kicked in and I started shaking all over the show animals were at about 100 yards from us and uh, and I just couldn't get it done after everything I learned at the range, breathing, squeezing trigger, pulling again, tight against your shoulder, all that sort of stuff, I just couldn't get it done. I was just shaking way too much. Animals figured out what the hell we were doing. They scattered again. We stalked about another 200 yards. And at this stage, my uncle had broken away from us, broke back down into one of the dongas that they, we had seen them run into to try and spook them out. Anyway, the plan worked well. And me and my dad got into position in the middle of nowhere. There's this one tree, myself and my dad, nothing else around us, just bare grass. That's it. The animals backed around, came straight for that one tree and detoured a little bit off and stood at about 80 yards from us. My plan walking up to that tree was, as soon as we see the animals and I get the opportunity, I'm going to put it down on the log, pull the trigger. Not even going to think about it. And that's exactly what I did. As the, Like I said before, we didn't know anything about hunting. And this was all new to us. And my dad, just out of uh, previous discussions to a, a numerous amount of people that we always knew that, well, we kind of, anticipated that the ram would always single himself out either to the front or the back of the herd. And at the, in this particular situation, he singled himself out to the back of the herd. And we laid down and, yeah, one shot, dropped him on the spot, and I was ecstatic. I was over the moon. I couldn't believe what, what we had just done. And um, anyway, I loaded the and we'll take him up to the shed and we did the traditional liver, blood on the face type thing. But for me, and funny enough, when I lay in bed that night, it was cold. The celebrations were flowing. My dad, uncle and a couple of his mates, 
<laughs> they had a, a very special time in sinking a, a few whiskeys or cold beverages that night. But um, for me, it wasn't about the kill. For me, it was about sharing that moment. For me, it was about t taking in that moment and 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 overcoming over overcoming some obstacles and um, fear. Fear of failure, fear of not being as successful as what I wanted to be, learning from mistakes, and the understanding, the understanding of wildlife, the understanding of your surroundings. Because it's not it's 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 all those factors involved. I mean when whenever you aren't hunting, you you take so many elements in and you you, you check in the wind direction, you check in the um you know, you check in your environment. Which way is gonna be the easiest way to stalk? How are the animals reacting? Are they do they see you? If they do see you, are they reacting like they feel threatened? Are they inquisitive? How are they behaving? And it's all those factors that got, really got me into where I am and, and what I do. And the kill is just something added because there's something about it. When when, when I knelt down and I, I held that bless back in my hand and I knelt down and I, I had this this instant reflection of 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 gratitude i felt thankful for for this magnificent animal that i've just killed to provide food for my family there, there's a sense of accomplishment there's a sense of respect and i think i i, th I think as a hunter that's something we'll never be able to explain. And, and, and we get frustrated with, 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 with society, with, with these greenies, these tree huggers that we want to call them because they, they, they don't understand that. They, they've never been in a situation to appreciate that moment. So what we do is we lash out with the easiest thing that we think is the right answer. Like, oh, well, I'm feeling my family. Uh, oh, well, it's conservation. Oh, well, it's this. Oh, well, it's that. Oh, well, it's a... Although it is true, from a hunter to a hunter, we never have to explain that moment because we know we've all shared it. It's difficult to put into words, but we yet we we look at each other and we we almost know that that's what we each and every single one of us has experienced. And I'm sorry if you haven't. Well, you need to really look at yourself being a hunter. I so often find these videos on social media and other platforms of these little kids shooting their first animal and shaking and in tears and it, it's it's those moments that, that, that as a hunter you have that realization of what you've just done. And from that day forward you've got an obligation to look after what you have just done. It's a unique it's a unique thing. Hunting is an extremely unique thing and that's why it's frowned upon in so many different ways. But yet if there are people out there that want to understand that you have my utmost respect. But if you blind it and you don't want to try and understand that. Well, then let's just not have this conversation because me trying to explain my part and, and, and that moment, it's, it's just too much. Guys, I want to personally just thank every each and every one of you. I know the Sunday discussion as a podcast has been a little bit all over the show, but 
Uh, I'm having so much fun, man. Uh, I really am. Uh, I just love doing these things. And um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm in, I'm in discussions. I'm hoping to get a couple of guys on board, uh, especially now with the, the poaching topic out, out in and in the air. I would love to get um, somebody that can share a little bit more light on it and uh, share some expertise on how we go about it and, and what they recommend. Um, but for myself, if you haven't yet and you are watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, every little bit helps. I, I will appreciate it so much. I mean, it's the support I've had thus far has been incredible. Um, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, guys, um, and if you haven't, head along to uh, PH Toolbox. Check it out. You don't have to buy anything. I just need a footprint there. It would be nice if you guys do. <laughs> oh, I'm a terrible salesman. But anyway, guys, um, from myself, from the PH Journals team, from the PH Toolbox team, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone that's been a part of this magnificent journey. I love doing what I'm doing and I'm not going to stop. I love sharing some special moments with you guys and I'm hoping to have some really cool guests on here soon. Um, it's level one, lockdown's pretty much over now and the borders are open which is really exciting. So the flow of traffic should start coming in and everything else falling into place. But until then, guys stay safe, stay blessed, stay humble, happy hunting for all my American friends and we'll catch up with you guys soon. Have a good evening. We'll see you guys. Cheers.